Hi, I'm Robbie Hanna Anderman. Welcome back to the Healing Trees Forest School. Next episode, it's just a little one here on uh, pears and what's going on in the pear tree world at this time and this location. This is a uh, Yuri pear tree. Puts out a, oh, a pear about yay size and it's very, very sweet and yummy and makes wonderful juice and wonderful everything else and just wonderful to eat out of hand. I really love it. And uh, this is a tree that I've been tending for about 35 years. And you can see here, this is, uh, these are flower buds that are about to open. It'll be hopefully a few more days before they do because uh, we're not uh, in a hurry. The frost is basically passed, but uh, we want to be able to uh, enjoy them and not rush them. But you can see on this right next to them here, that's a leaf bud. That one's going to open into a leaf while this one opens into a flower. And this one here also opens into a leaf. And you'll notice over here, get off. Uh, this is like a whole bunch that are going to open into flower. And we'll come back at another episode and show you how they've developed and what they're like at that time. You can see there's like, uh, like a fist that's closed, but they're going to open up into these white flowers that are quite beautiful and fragrant in their own way. And then what I'd like to show you next is uh, an apple tree to see at the same season how the difference is. So we'll wander our way over to an apple tree, which will be over yonder. This one here is called uh, Sweet 16. Okay, let's take that back. Sweet 16 is over yonder. This here is Lobo. This was a, um, a graft that we did, oh, let's say 30 years ago. Produces a very large, wonderful apple that's uh, very much like a uh, Macintosh, but different for sure. And uh, it keeps reasonably well, but not that long, not as long as... And you can see here that the buds are, are still totally closed up. Their apple is like going, nah, I don't think so. No, nah, I'm not quite ready. It's not warm enough for me. Except there's one over there. See, there's one in every bunch. Every tree is going to have somebody going, hey, look at me. And it's opening its bud. That's a flower bud. And there's more flower buds that it will be opening soon under it. And you can see even a little bit, well, it's definitely quite green. And it's going to be opening into pink which is a certain stage that uh, people look for when they're caring for trees like these. And so this is, um, and maybe we'll take a stroll down a little further where we have um, a plum tree and you can see how the plums are doing at this point. This is a Juanita plum, again from Golden Bough Tree Nursery. And the, uh, the buds here are doing the same thing. They're not in a hurry to open. But they're, uh, they're definitely saying, last week they weren't this far open. So they're quite, uh, quite moving along. It's the season for, for growth. It's the season to get ready to put out a flower and then make fruit. And there'll be, usually there's more flowers than there is fruit on a plum. But the fragrance is sometimes almost overpowering. And as a contrast, perhaps we can go see a, a wild plum and see how it's doing now in this season as we walk by a wild black cherry here, which is, uh, aha, this one here is now showing, these are the, uh, gonna be the flowers. Here, these are the leaves. These are the flowers that will be opening into a whole, like a grape cluster of flowers and then a whole cluster of fruit. Dark, very dark bluish black. And over here, now we have very similar, but definitely different is the, uh, these are wild um, plums, and it's the more easy to see here. You have to be careful with the wild plums because they do have these, uh, these spikes, like there and there and there. And uh, again, they're like a ball that's going to open up. You can see, especially like right there, it's just closed up and wanting to open, and, and it will do so in the next couple of days, and then be incredibly fragrant. 
These like to grow from uh, what are called suckers or growth. The root growth will take them under the ground and they'll open into uh, um, flowers and the underground will grow into new. That's why we have a whole row here and none of these were planted. They, uh, they moved in probably from a seed. One grew and then it sent runners and more grow and we have a whole uh, over there, a whole cluster of them. Thicket, that's the right word for them, thickets. And now we have another apple tree here, but again, it's not in a hurry either. So this is where we are in, um, oh, mid-May in the Wilno Hills. And uh, beauty is all surrounding us. Beauty within, may you all walk in beauty. Thanks for joining us again for this episode of the Healing Trees Forest School. Yours truly, Robbie. Hello, I've returned here a week later to, uh, this is Yuri Pear, U-R-E, and uh, you can see there's a lot of sunlight up there, and uh, if you've got a good eye, you may be able to see some of the bees that are still visiting. Earlier in the day, it was just humming, just humming, all these puffs of white, and here's an indication. So last week we were seeing buds just starting to open. And now you can see how they actually are open. And if you take a close look, well, we'll see if we, here's one that has a bit of pink inside, right there. There it is, yeah. Thank you, Yuri. Beautiful tree, producing magical, wonderful fruits. Very sweet and yummy. So we're gonna go from here and see what the difference is uh, looking at an apple tree, how at the same time, and this is now Oh, 22nd of uh, May, how much difference it is from a week ago, how much more open it is. And it probably won't be in bloom yet, but that's okay. Okay, onward. So here we are with Lobo apple, apple tree. And if you look up, you can see how it's very well pruned in the way of uh, lots of light can enter from all sorts of angles and lots of wind can move through. That means the birds can come in and pick off any bugs that are happening. But at this point, it's uh, not quite ready to flower. Nope, I don't see any of the flowers that are ready to say, hello. Nobody's even in pink. So this is like later on and uh, well, there's somebody who's showing a little bit of pink, but not very much, still at the uh, young stages. Still a beautiful tree producing a good size apple that uh, is probably late August, early September and keeps for a little while and it's quite yummy. Here now we've moved over to uh, the land of of plum. This is one called Juanita, W-A-N-E-T-A, -E which came from Golden Bough Tree Farm. And you can see up there, there's a, a bumblebee uh, visiting, and it looks like there's another wild bee that's also visiting, looking for some pollen to take home. Pollen, actually nectar too, because they're open enough that we can actually get nectar from these now. Well, they can. I haven't tried, but I don't think I do too well at it. It's possible for humans to actually take uh, um, one of those light paint brushes and uh, touch the pollen from one blossom and take it over to the next blossom and thereby do the pollinating. But I haven't heard of anybody actually being able to extract any uh, of, the, um, of the nectar. <laughs> 
But you can see most of them actually still balls that aren't open yet. And they will be in this next week. So over here, we have what we looked at last week and I mistook it for a, um, for a plum, a wild plum, but this here is um, a black, wild black cherry. And you can see how it's gonna have like, these are gonna widen out to be plums about, no, pardon me, cherries about that size, black, maybe a touch of blue, good size stone inside, sadly, but uh, producing a very good tasting uh, fruit, juice, um, cordials, all sorts of ways that people enjoy these. And then in contrast, we have here, again, this is a wild plum, so it never was grafted, and it's been one, it's from um, a, um, a wild plum, I think it's called Canada plum, that uh, has been in this area for a very long time. When, when we moved here 51 years ago, Eddie Prince, who lived down the road about two miles, um, he came over with some uh, of these wild plums. And he has lots, there's still lots over at that farm. And uh, they've pretty much taken over certain areas. And because that's what they do, they like to grow in thickets. And uh, that's where we are. Actually, you know what would be fun to do is I'd like to walk you over here and see uh, a little bit of um, a, a project I have ongoing which I'm hoping will come to fruition in the, the near future. What we have here are two um, hawthorns, wild hawthorns, and you can see they're really heavy spikes down here on the wild rootstock. And I'm sort of giving it away because this is a rootstock. And if you look here, you can see it changes from this gray to this gray. And that's where Ethan did some grafting of a little, from a little stick that we were able to get from the uh, National Arboretum, Arboretum in Ottawa, where they kindly took a cutting off of a, a northern Chinese um, hawthorn, which as you see, the, well, you can't see how the leaves, well, the leaves are a little different at this stage. But the other fascinating part is all these heavy thorns, they're not on here. And they actually produce a, um, a haw, which is the fruit, about that size as compared to ones about that size, which are on the wild trees. And my opinion is we're keeping the branches with the thorns on them to discourage any deer from coming over and checking out how yummy this probably would taste if they chewed off the top. And may that not happen. This one here can also see the graft. See, there's a line there line going down and changing from this color of gray to this color of gray green. It's magical what the, uh, and very kind what the trees are willing to let us do with the, as uh, um, long as we can make the right connections and do it with good spirit. They're, they're quite willing to be, one ver a haw can go on a haw and a pear can go on a pear, an apple can go on an apple, and plums can go on plums, cherries can go on cherries. And that can be stretched in several directions, but the more secure bonding and best fruit production is with the, uh, when you stick to the same uh, kind of tree. So that's where we are today. Here we are in getting toward the end of uh, April, uh, May. A raven just flew by, so I just had to say hello. And uh, this is again Robbie saying goodbye and thanks for coming by to the Healing Trees Forest School. Uh, yours truly, Robbie.